Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. We just got the set 10 ban list last week and it was pretty jarring for a lot of us. A lot of us, including myself, are losing some of the most powerful decks we've played in the game. And now that's not me complaining about the ban list. I actually the ban list was very good, very good for the, for the health of the game moving forward. But as you guys know, I played Red Yellow Surge Goku. I was very, very partial to that deck. So I feel you guys when I talk about this in terms of We've lost a lot of the powerful decks we've played, but actually that's not the right way to phrase it. We didn't lose the decks. We lost the leaders for the most part. We lost some of the power, but the decks are still there. And that's kind of what we're talking about in today's video. If you guys lost a deck, if you played Piccolo, if you played Surge Goku, if you played Black Aggro, I'm gonna talk about in today's video how we can recover from that ban list and how we can adjust our decks and our play styles a little bit in order to mold and move forward with the new ban list your decks are still playable just gonna take a little bit of a change to make it work guys if you're new here make sure to subscribe hit that bell so never miss a video if you want to help support the channel there are many free ways to do that you can always like the video maybe share the video maybe watch an ad and if you guys want to buy or pre-order any of the cards you see in today's video you can always use my link in the description to tcg player with that being said let's get started so one of the biggest losses on the ban list was Super Saiyan God Son Goku Surge Divinity. What was his big errata? Well, you see here on the screen, this is his old effect text. His errata, which takes place when set 10 drops in July, he can only basically do all of his effects on your turn. So no longer can you get the plus 10K for free on your opponent's turn. No longer can you blank all your opponents, double strikes, triple strikes, and criticals on, on their turn. You can only do these things on your turn. So the leader changes a bit. The leader says now, okay, you can remove barrier from your opponent's battle cards. You can remove them with things like Beerus, No Holds Barred, or you know Super Saiyan Vegeta Exploding Weakness. Now you're also a very aggressive leader. You, you can only get the plus 10K crit during your turn. So that means you're a much more aggressive leader. So the defensive play style of red yellow, it definitely goes down quite a bit. You know, the no holds barred Beerus is still a really good defensive play. Great at Bardock Raiders War Cry is still really good defensively. And then you have the new cards like Bergamo Ferocious Roar, but you lose a lot of that defensive ability that Surge Goku offered on his own, no matter what your main deck was. So if you still want to play red yellow, like I talked about before, the leader might have to change. Some slight play style things might have to change. Let's talk about what those changes could be in a pure red yellow sense. So for one, we're talking about Beerus Ferocious Strike. Now, people complained and kind of rightfully so that Beerus really only had one tournament to really shine. There was basically one major tournament where set eight was legal. And then the next tournament after that was with the Surge expansions already. So once Surge Goku came out, he pretty much outclassed Beerus in pretty much all ways. Their front sides are very similar. Beerus has to pitch a red or yellow card to draw two where Surge Goku can draw two first and then pitch any card he wants. So that's a straight upgrade right there pretty much. Beerus untaps two, which is actually a little better than Surge Goku's basically untap one, draw one. But Surge Goku's backside, the defensive capabilities of it completely outclass Beerus. Like Beerus gets a free 10K combo every turn, but Surge Goku gets a free 10K for an entire two turns. So right there, that is a lot stronger when you measure the value of that in terms of an entire turn. But now that Surge Goku can't use his abilities on defense anymore, Beerus picks up a ton of value because now that 10K combo every turn during both players turns that Beerus gets, that is very, very strong because you're a little bit stronger now than Surge Goku defensively. So I think if you want to play Red Yellow, I think if you want to play pretty much the same exact deck that Red Yellow Surge Goku was playing, Beerus is the deck you want to play in that scenario. It's, it's exactly that. It kind of just outclasses Surge Goku now, which is kind of funny because Surge Goku is the leader that outclassed Beerus in the first place. But I guess the God of Destruction always wins. Next up, if you want to play a different type of leader, Assassin Hit Returns, I think is a great leader for Red Yellow. When you're looking at the archetype of Red Yellow, you really want to look at a generically powerful leader because it's not an archetype. It doesn't care what your leader is name wise. It doesn't care what your leader is archetype wise. It just cares that your leader is good enough to support the red yellow engine itself. And hit is an amazing leader on the backside or on the front side. Rather, he attacks, draws a card, gains 5k. So that's really strong right there on the awakened side attack, draw a card. You can revive a two drop or less skillless battle card from your drop area. So you're going to have to change the build a little bit. You're probably going to want to include four copies of either some red or yellow 20k vanilla battle card, depending on like, you know, 
if you need more yellow cards for combo then make it a yellow 20k if you need more red cards to combo make it a red 20k but regardless you change the build a little bit and now you have a great leader and hit likewise the activate main slash battle is another good defensive and offensive ability again surge goku loses its defensive powers inherently the leader had and now assassin hit returns kind of picks up the slack there once per turn choose one card in your hand place in the drop area choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with either double strike critical or blocker and ko it so if your opponent's going in with like a foo shrouded or something really crazy strong double strike like that you get rid of it critical get rid of it so it does cost you a card from hand but red yellow draws a lot of cards as it is with sand instincts goku i know people hate when i talk about that card but it is a matter of the fact so this leader does work out pretty well with that you can also pitch your 20k vanillas and then just revive them so it's kind of like you pitched nothing in general and then red yellow full power jiren the unstoppable red u11 has been made a thing with Draftbox 5. There are a lot of great Draftbox 5 cards, one of which is the Coquette that can bring out your Kunchi from the deck. That gives your Coquette and Kunchi barrier, so they're able to make your leader's backside effect live. So if you play this version of Red Yellow, you will have to include like probably a 7 to 8 card U11 package, but you don't have to play any more U11s than that. And plus, you're actually already playing Topo. So that's another card that is a U11 that will trigger Jiren's effect to protect himself. So you literally just can't die. And this is actually a really good leader to pick up now with Vegex being so powerful. You need that type of protection depending on if you're playing against Vegex. If, you're, if your local meta is full of Vegex, this card, this leader rather, is going to be a really good strategy for the deck. So I definitely would pick him up. Now, one leader I want to talk about really quickly, Super Saiyan Goten's Display of Mastery. He's probably the next best generic leader coming out of set 10 that the game probably will have uh, for a long time. So a lot of decks to talk about here. Gotenks will probably be a good fit for him. I just don't want to keep repeating Gotenks over the course of the video. So I'm going to talk about it here and then not mention it again. Now, what if you were a tricolor Surge Goku player? This was, of course, another really popular version of Surge Goku, possibly more popular than the red yellow version itself. And it was really powerful, of course. I mean, your leader's red, so you had access to Divine Obliterator, which let you play the cooler arrivals. And then you played yellow, you splash yellow for things like Frost Ellie Poison, Giant Ball, Chomp of the Trickster, other powerful yellow cards. So if you were a tricolor Surge Goku player, what leaders could you play to still maintain the same deck list? Well, I think Assassinate Returns is still really good in this scenario. Basically, same things apply. He is a red leader, so Beerus Divine Obliterator works with him. And again, he has a good defensive ability on his own. Bundle of Confidence Hercule. This is a pretty rogue, outside-the-box pick, but I think it actually could work, again, because of how powerful Vegengs is. We saw how good Hercule was during Storm format, where he just pretty much outclass all the storm decks because of his inherent defensive capabilities that awaken draw three is really powerful and when you have the ability to untap energy with your super combo with sensu beans and things like that you're going to be able to make use of that hand size on defense to drop things like the cooler arrival the majin buu arrival so that's a really good thing it could work out i definitely would like to see people experiment with it it could work in a vegenx oriented format and you'll see surge goku here it might be a weird one but i think surge goku could still work with the tricolor version now if you remember what i said a few minutes ago the reason i don't like it with red yellow anymore is because he loses his own inherent defensive capabilities making red yellow a bit more clunky you know on a turn where you're caught tapped out or you don't have the best defensive cards in your hand the plus 10k really helps you really buys you a turn now in red blue yellow where you have the red blue to untap surge goku could still very much work because your deck is inherently very defensive so that could work out i think it is very powerful the leader still draws a lot of cards on the front side so that definitely adds to his merit unlike the next leader we're going to talk about blue green piccolo man this guy really got cut off at the kneecaps like he just doesn't draw cards anymore he still looks at the top card you can decide if you want to keep it or put it to the bottom but he doesn't draw an extra card every turn anymore so he's very fair in that sense he doesn't have to attack the opponent's leader he never has to attack the leader but he doesn't plus anymore on his own his backside still an inherent neg four that could be strong but if you're playing pure blue green piccolo hand control what leaders could you play now to go with that i think android 21 is a great pick you can't play some of the mono green support that Pickle was able to play. Like, you can't play Earth Destroying Kamehameha, but you have a lot of hand control cards at your disposal that are generic enough for 21 to play. One of the ones I want to mention, the Draftbox 4 Goku Black Rare that brings out the 7 drops of Masu. I think that's a really strong hand control component. You also have a lot of good draw power in, like, Vegeta Energy Absorber with your leader untapping energy. I think it's really good. Chilai Limo the Kind Hearted. This is a green leader that does not have to attack the opponent. And those are kind of hard to come by nowadays, to be honest. Like, Piccolo was really the only good one for a long time. Chilai Limo is another pretty decent one. On the Unawakened side, 
She pluses one every turn to find her Dragon Balls. You have the Oob to get Awakened very quickly. And on the backside, you have your free desires. You can play a kind wish to board wipe. You can bring out your Paragus Super Combos from the deck if you wanted to, if you didn't want to play Bionic Blitz. And you could play Cell's Earth Strike Kamehameha. The deck list would have to change a pretty decent amount because you would have to fit seven Dragon Balls, maybe some amount of desires, but that opens you up to a lot of new strategies. You could play Assemble the Squad if you find the right two drops to play. That could even bring out your Bionic Blitz Super Combos. You can then play uh, your, your Cell Destroying Kamehameha and a lot of the other blue green hand control like the Saiyan, Saiyans of Earth, Goku, and Gohan. So that stuff works out pretty well. And one that I'm a fan of, Stopping Power Sun Goku. With the new Bardock Paternal Unison, Unison card, this card picks up a lot of value because he has four one drops. He can inherently play the Trading Blows Sun Goku that allow you to sacrifice them with the Bardock. So that works out really well in terms of hand control. You can play your Earth Strength Kamehameha. You can play your blue-green stuff. I think this could actually be a pretty solid blue-green strategy. Now, what if you were a tricolor Piccolo player? What if you played green, yellow, blue Piccolo and you wanted to play all these powerhouse cards, SS Broly, Super 17, Hellstorm Unleashed, and Cell Xeno? Well, what are your options then? I think 21, still a great tricolor leader. Again, you don't ever have to attack your opponent with 21, so that makes her really good in terms of using the Super 17 successor. She can make use of Super Saiyan Broly all out of salt. You can combo your Bionic Blitz. You can combo a San Instinct's Goku. That's your green and your yellow right there. And then you can play your SS Broly all out of salt. Chile Lima, once again, you are playing a leader, does not have to attack the opponent. And you can, it might be a little tougher to house a tricolor deck because you're playing seven Dragon Balls and some amount of desires, but it is SS Broly BR. It could synergize well with Chile Limo BR. And you could maybe drop blue. You can maybe just play pure green, yellow and just play Chile Limo. Android 20, another one of the rare leaders we have that does not have to attack the opponent. And he actually searches a lot of the stuff you're needing in the deck. He searches your uh, Super 17 successor, searches your Jero super combo. So that works out really, really well. The backside of this leader is pretty lackluster, but the fact that he searches things you need and doesn't have to attack the opponent, meaning you can make use of that Super 17 successor, that does work out pretty well in my opinion. And then what if you were a mono black aggro player? What if you loved Turles? What if you loved aggro and now Turles is gone? What are your options? Well. You might have to adjust to a mid-range strategy. If you wanted to play Demigra like I did, I'm probably going to adjust my Demigra to more of a mid-range deck. I'm going to use the Power Booster Demigra, which brings out Temporal Darkness Demigra, which brings out the other 4-drop Demigra that the name escapes my brain right now. But that card rips cards out of your opponent's hand, so that could be a pretty good mid-range strategy. And then if you're playing Vegenx, well, to be honest, Vegenx aggro is not really all that concerned with losing Turles. It's still very, very, very aggressive, but I think the Vegenx space time, syn space -time synthesis and Vegeng's Burning Impact Unleash are really good cards to lean into if you wanted to play a mid-range version of Vegex. That's just my opinion, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a different type of video, but I wanted to get some stuff out there for you guys that feel like you're kind of lost out there, feel like you lost your favorite strategy. There are definitely ways to continue to play it. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.